Today, E3D are releasing their brand new high flow nozzle for their Revo ecosystem called da -da -da -da, Revo High Flow. It utilizes a different but similar technology to Bontex CHT design, where the flow path is divided in order to achieve higher flow rates and faster printing speed. But how does it improve the Revo performance and is it better than similarly priced alternatives? Today, I'm going to take a closer look at Revo HF and test eight different nozzles to find out how it compares to the competition. I only received these five days ago and spent my weekend testing, so if you appreciate that effort, please support me by using the links down below. My name's Adam and welcome to Vector3D. This section of the video is sponsored by PCBWay, who you may already know for their high quality manufacturing and assembly service for PCBs. But did you know they also do sheet metal fabrication, CNC machining, injection molding, and 3D printing? What's more, it's really easy to use. All you have to do is upload the files that you want to get manufactured, select the parameters and materials for manufacture, and you'll automatically be provided with design for manufacture feedback and a quote. They also provide sponsorship for non-profit and educational projects, so be sure to check them out via the link below at pcbway.com. I'm also technically sponsored by E3D since they provided these parts free for testing. E3D's Revo range is a hot-end ecosystem designed to make it easier to swap nozzles. Just screw in with your fingers and you're done. Standard Revo had two problems in my opinion though, lack of support for abrasive materials and a quite limited flow rate capability compared to other options. These new nozzles, which look basically identical from the outside, are available in six sizes from 0.4mm up to 1.4mm with a new 60 watt heater available too. All of these new parts are fully interchangeable with the existing ecosystem. Revo HF works by dividing the flow path into a ring, increasing the surface area available for heat transfer to the plastic. The nozzle is made in two parts. You have the main body, which is where melting starts, and you have the high flow insert, which uses this elongated tip to cut into the center of the filament, and then four holes that allow material down into the extrusion orifice. Although there are clearly unique elements, there are also similarities between Revo HF and CHT, so there's an agreed partnership between Bontech and E3D. You'll even see Bontech's name on the Revo HF boxes. So, how does it perform? To find out how well Revo High Flow works, we need to compare it to two things. CHT and, of course, standard Revo. We can also compare the improvement of V6 to CHT and Revo to Revo HF to see how well each technology works in comparison to a standard flow equivalent. So these are the eight nozzles that I'm going to be testing. For the Revo setup, I use the Revo Voron and the new 60 watt heater. For the screw-in nozzles, I use the Fetus Rapido, since at the time of filming, it's a similar price at around 90 pounds for the hot end and 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and also uses a cylindrical ceramic heater. Both of these hot end setups will be tested on my Voron 2.4 R2 using the Clockwork 2 extruder, Mellowfly 2040 toolhead CAN board, Octopus Pro mainboard, and running Clipper firmware. Unfortunately, version 2 of my Extrusion Force testing machine won't be ready for quite a little while still, so today I'm going to be using the CNC kitchen blob method, which you can find linked below. This test method works by extruding a known quantity into a blob on the build plate as the nozzle moves very slowly upwards. It repeats the blobs all across the plate at increasing flow rates. Once completed, we can weigh all of the samples and see how the increasing flow rate affected the quantity of material that's been extruded. I've tested 24 flow rates from 8 to 54 millimeters cubed per second in steps of 2 millimeters cubed per second, extruding 200 millimeters for each blob. I've used Oozenest ABS Sulfur Yellow at 245 degrees C for all of my tests, all from the same roll of filament. If you want to see more testing like this, don't forget to subscribe and check out the links below to purchase Revo HF or other cool 3D printing things from the Vector 3D shop. So here are the results. Starting with the V6 0.4mm nozzle on the Fetus Rabido, you can see how increases in flow rate don't result in much deviation from perfect extrusion until around 20mm3 per second, where under extrusion begins to creep in. Comparing this to a 0.6mm V6 nozzle, you can see a slight improvement in performance, but of course the internal nozzle design is very similar, so we wouldn't expect huge gains. If we add in a comparison to CHT nozzles, 
you can see that the internal geometry on an otherwise fairly similar nozzle can have quite a big effect on what flow rate can be achieved before getting under extrusion. The 0.4mm CHT is similar to a standard 0.6 and the CHT 0.6 gets to around 30mm3 per second before having any significant issues. Moving over to the Revo results, you can see that Revo standard 0.4 and 0.6 do not perform quite as well as the standard V6 nozzles when they're in a Fetus Rapido, with the 0.4mm Revo only getting to around 10 to 12mm3 per second before some under extrusion. Revo HF does see quite a significant improvement though. Revo HF 0.4 is typically a little better than even the standard 0.6 Revo, and the 0.6 Revo shoots way above the others. To compare all nozzles, throwing them on a graph isn't particularly helpful, it's just a kind of rainbow mess. So instead I'm going to use a uniform benchmark by inspecting their fastest flow rate while staying above 95% extrusion. The Rapido results are in blue and the Revo are in red. You can see that across the board, at equivalent orifice diameter and flow technology, the Rapido consistently outperforms the Revo equivalent by 20-80%. to 80%. That's quite a big deal, and as far as I can tell, the only real reason for this is that the melt zone on the Rapido is a little bit longer. In fact, if we compare the performance for each hot end per unit length of the melt zone, we can see the results are much more even, with Revo actually pulling ahead in many cases. Using this data, we can also compare the two flow enhancing technologies, CHT and Revo HF. In my testing, on average, CHT improved performance by 26% while Revo HF improved performance by 52%. This suggests that Revo HF could outperform CHT in an otherwise identical hot end configuration. The last thing to consider is performance relative to price. So how much flow rate do you get for each pound that you spend? Revo 0.6 represents the best value for money, with the CHT 0.6 almost drawing, while Revo 0.4 performs the worst in this comparison. Overall, Revo and Rapido are fairly similarly priced, so while Revo catches up a little, it's not enough to take the lead. Before drawing any final conclusions, it's worth acknowledging that I've only tested one filament at one temperature. Materials from different brands can have different flow characteristics, and I haven't necessarily used a perfect idle attention either. While I think the results are representative in comparison to one another, they may not be comparable to other flow figures shown online. Remember, there's no standard method for flow rate testing at the moment, so everyone does it slightly differently and will therefore get different results. So where really does that leave us with Revo HF? Firstly, we can conclude that you should use the links in the description to support my work if you choose to buy anything. Secondly, I think it's important to recognise that in the technology comparison, Revo HF did very well. The method they've used to increase flow rate in a nozzle of identical size clearly works. The unfortunate thing, is that while they've pushed the limits on the internal technology with impressive performance relative to their own nozzles, they're only just meeting the competition in terms of absolute performance, and that feels a little disappointing. Also, since their high flow nozzles are directly compatible with the standard flow design, you might be questioning if there's any point in having standard flow nozzles anymore. I don't see many reasons when printing standard materials why you wouldn't go with the high flow nozzle. It's physically identical and has better performance. The only downside is that it's about twice the price. In terms of performance, my gut feeling is that the overall sizing of Revo is designed to allow the upgrade path from the old V6. Perhaps this has put design limits on the overall size, limiting the melt zone length and by extension the peak performance. After all, high flow technologies don't really unlock high performance, they simply compact it into a smaller space. By not constraining themselves in this way, E3D's competitors have had the freedom to push sizing to really maximise performance. Personally, I hope that we continue to see Revo evolve into sizes and shapes that push performance and not just technologies, but don't let me retract from the good technology that they have created here. Maybe we'll see Revo in longer format Volcano variants to really push flow rates beyond what standard hot ends can do. So in summary, for those already invested in the Revo ecosystem, this is definitely a great opportunity for a flow rate upgrade. However, if you're not, and we're looking for a new high performance king for your speedboat racing, then this probably isn't it. It's just not designed for extremes. The focus is more on compatibility, ease of use and longevity. So if that's what matters to you, you know where the links are.